Hi everyone, this is Professor Ellis with week 11 of Specialized Communications for Technology Students, English 1133, OL96. I uh, hope everybody's doing well, uh, that uh, everybody's healthy, safe, getting their work done. Um, and certainly, you know, that's true not just for our class, but all the other classes that uh, you're taking right now, and of course getting other work done that I know many of you are having to do because you have very busy work and school schedules. Um, but just as a reminder, before we get into uh, you know, all the nitty gritty of this week's class, make sure you remember uh, how to get in touch with me. If you've got questions, if you need to follow up about an assignment, uh, if you need to turn in something late, make sure you always email me, jls at cdtech.cuny.edu. As I've said before, um, as, because of the extenuating circumstances of the pandemic and us being online in this asynchronous class um, and with all the things that you all have going on I understand that it may be difficult to get all the assignments in on time so if you need that extra time up until the very end of the semester you can turn things in late uh, I'm not you know, adding any penalties to that what I want to see is your best work uh, that's what you get graded on um, so that you are as successful as possible in our class. But remember that if you turn in something late, you need to send me an email to let me know that you've turned in X assignment uh, a little late so that I know to go back and check it off for you because I've already moved on with the rest of the semester and won't be looking back unless you let me know that you've turned in something late. Uh, if you want to talk about anything relating to the class, um, Make sure you remember my office hours are Wednesdays from 3 until 5 p.m. or by appointment. You can also let me know what your availability is for like a week, and then we can uh, set up a time at a different uh, day and time than my normal office hours to talk it over. Uh, for some folks, I think this is going to be really important um, because, uh, as I'll show you all briefly, um, how to check your grades as a reminder in the class because uh, I know like a, you know the majority of the class so far still needs to get in project one okay that's just that's brass tax is what needs to get done uh, but for those folks that have turned it in uh, you will find when you check your grade later and look at the comments of what I wrote is I want to work with some of you to improve the work and resubmit it uh, for a regrade because um, maybe there were some misunderstandings about how to write the assignment or um, maybe you need some help brainstorming uh, more job related uh, material which I know you all have you all have a lot of experience in education uh, but maybe you need some help brainstorming what to populate the different fields of the resumes uh, and content to put in your job application letter uh, to make those documents sing um, and so that's what we can really take advantage of during office hours to get some of that kind of work done. Um, so what do we got going on this week? So just as a review, last week uh, we went over the organization of the technical report. I talked about some of the different sections that you can choose to include. And again, each technical report is going to be a little bit different. Uh, some of you may be reviewing a design. Some of you may be uh, doing an investigation of a scientific or technical topic um, in which case depending on what you select uh, you will have different uh, sections that you'll want to include and others that you can leave out you get to decide that um, and that, to help with that process you know I've um, talked about David McMurray's online technical writing textbook as a resource not just in terms of um, the, the explanations that he gives, but also the example documents that he provides, which you can look at. I've linked to all this before, I've talked about it before, um, so part of the reading in the class is to use that textbook, which you get free of charge, but use that textbook as a resource for learning about how to approach these types of documents um, as a supplement to what we talk about in our class. Then also for last week's weekly writing assignment, uh, you were to write a memo describing your report's organization after you listened to the lecture and looked at the David McMurray online technical writing textbook. And then your homework was to continue your research on the topic that you've selected for um, your research report. 
So this week, what I want to go over is show you again how to check your grades and also check your progress in the class. Um, I've already talked about emailing me if you've turned in anything late uh, so that I know to go back and check things off for you. And then the bulk of what we'll talk about during this week's class is your introduction to your technical report. Um, and then we'll go over the weekly writing assignment, which you will use to draft an introduction in memo format. And this is just a way of you showing me that you're doing the work of writing the technical report. So like this writing you do for this week's weekly writing assignment will go directly into your technical report. Um, and it's based on what you've already been doing research on, learning about the topic, thinking about the organization for your technical report, and now we're going to uh, write an introduction for that document. And then your homework's going to be to continue the research uh, on your, your technical report topic that you've selected. So let's talk a little bit about grades and checking your progress in the class. Uh, so I'm going to go over to our open lab site, uh, and I'm actually looking at the syllabus right now. But let's click on understanding here, and that'll take us back to our course homepage. So if you need to check a grade for any of the major projects in the class, you just scroll down the page, past the menu, past the contact Professor Ellis part, and then you'll see this link here for check your grade under course gradebook. And so for the major projects in the class, that's where I put your grade at and comments on that. So for those folks that have finished the job application portfolio, you can click on check your grade and you'll be able to read my comments and see the numerical grade that I gave you. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, uh, that grade can be improved uh, by revising and resubmitting your documents. So basically you read my comments, think them over, apply them to uh, your deliverables, and then resubmit them and let me know, hey, Professor Ellis, I resubmitted all my documents. Can you look over them again to um, consider changing my grade? And I'll do that, and then I'll let you know if the, if the work that you've put into it will raise your grade or not. And again, that's something we can talk about also during office hours. Uh, beyond the comments that I made in uh, the course gradebook, okay? Now, the other thing you can do to check the weekly writing assignments, which you know that's, that's a pretty big part of your grade, doing that regular writing, which as I've said before, always figures into the projects in the class, because I don't want you to think any of the work in our class is wasted. All that work is meant to improve your, your writing skill, improve your thinking about technical writing and the technical writing topics we're discussing. Uh, but there's ways that you can filter or, or take the work from weekly writing and put into uh, some of the major projects in the class. Now, to see your progress on that, if you log into OpenLab, come to our OpenLab site, and then mouse over here in the title bar where it says English 1133 OL96. This is the dashboard. And in the dashboard, this is kind of under the hood, behind the scenes part of WordPress that OpenLab runs on. And it's from here that you're able to go to comments. You click on comments, and under comments, you can either search comments by typing in your name or I think for your access you should see your work listed here. You should see your name, your email address, and then a comment that would have been for the weekly writing assignment. And then in response to here on the right, it'll show you which of the weekly writing assignments that writing applies to. And so you can just count those up. If you see like for each of the weekly writing assignments, that you've submitted a comment, you've got all the credit. But if you're going through the list and you see like one of these weekly writing assignments are missing, well, then you can go back to our Open Lab course site, just click the title bar again, scroll to the left and go click on weekly writing assignments in the menu on the left, and then scroll down to the weekly writing assignment that you saw was missing. And then you, you can click on that title, read what the assignment is, 
and then you'll be able to scroll down to the comment section and copy and paste your writing into a comment and post a comment. And again, whenever you do that, if you need to turn in something late, maybe you overlooked it or missed it or are catching up, whatever the reason, um, all you got to do is submit it and then send me an email, jellis at citytech.cuny.edu, and let me know that you've turned that in so I'll go back and check it off for you. Easy as that. So that should keep everybody on point with like you know your grades you do the the majority of the grades come from like the big projects so you want to get those in obviously but then don't miss out on the smaller stuff those weekly writing assignments uh, make sure you get all that credit as well and again all the writing you do on weekly writing assignments will figure in some way into the major projects so none of that's busy work all of it is meant to keep you moving forward in the class and accomplishing the big projects. So now let's talk about this technical report introduction. So all of the technical reports need to have an introduction. Uh, you need to have something at the very beginning of your document that helps your reader understand what topic you're talking about and what is the purpose of the document that you are creating. And so in this uh, in this part of the technical report, you'll need to point blank say that this is a technical report that is serving some purpose, you're know, doing some kind of work about a given topic that you've selected. So let's look at some generic ways to design just a bare bones introduction, okay? Like the, what are the main parts that should go into it? And so here I'm gonna and big in this a little bit, make it a little bit easier to read. So if you want to think about the introduction, it's basically going to be roughly a paragraph for the size of technical report you're writing um, for this project. I mean, this isn't like a um, gargantuan research uh, report that you're writing for this project. It's, it's substantial, but it's not um, you know, something that needs like a much longer introduction. I think you know, a paragraph that's 250 to 500 words maximum. I mean 250 words single spaced is half a page. Uh, 500 words single spaced is a full page. Um, so I think that you know, thinking about those, those uh, kinds of um, that design, that layout of like how many words are going to fit in so much space, it gives you an idea about you know, how much information is going to go into it, how long it's going to take someone to read that, and also to give yourself enough words for the remainder of your, your research report. Because uh, again, if we go back over to the syllabus, the research report is only 1500 to 2000 words. So if your introduction is like say 500 words, that's already a third of your research report if we're looking at the lower end of the word scale for this window that you're working with, 1500 to 2000 words. Um, but your introduction can also be shorter than that, which obviously gives you more words for the other parts of your research report that are you're going to be the more interesting parts. The introduction helps a person enter uh, what it is you're writing about. Um, so it shouldn't be something that capitalizes, that takes over all of your writing uh, on the research report. It's really the, the entrance to the, rem to the rest of the report. You're introducing, you're you know, letting a, the reader know what they're getting into essentially. So the way that I've uh, presented this here is the introduction, if we're going on the shorter side, like say 250 words, it's only something that's going to be probably in the neighborhood of, I don't know, maybe 68 sentences, okay? And the first sentence is where you really need to, to you know, come out the gate strong and let someone know what the purpose of your report is and what is its topic. Okay, this is where the very first thing the person's going to read lays out the purpose of your report, 
I mean, just the fact that it is a report and also what is its topic? What, it is, what is it you're going to be writing about? So I give you a couple of examples here, a few examples here. Uh, this first one, uh, I write, this report is a design review of Apple's ARM-based M1 system on a chip. And then I put in parentheses, capital S, lowercase o, uppercase C, the correct abbreviation for system on a chip. So this sentence lets a person know that it's a report, that it's a design review, and if we look back over the syllabus, one of the types of technical reports you can be writing about is a design review. This is where you're looking at some scientific or technical design and researching it, like telling like what is the historical background, like how it came to be, how is it made, uh, what, is it, what is its applications, um, what is its competition in the marketplace, these types of things. Um, or you could just simply be investigating a topic. And this is where you're looking at a scientific or technical topic and then basically learning about it and then presenting what you've learned about it in the report so that someone can read the report and basically get a summary based on your research about what that topic, what are all its ins and outs, what's all the details about it, its historical background, uh, comparisons with other things, either like in the marketplace or in a marketplace of ideas. Um, maybe it concerns a problem and you're wanting to investigate solutions. Again, investigation is a very broad term, but these are the kind of two things you can choose between for your technical report. So here I give a different example uh, for the second uh, sentence. This report investigates the effectiveness of several different team collaboration services, comma, including Slack, Discord, and Microsoft Teams. So here I'm saying that it's a report, it's investigating a topic, and then the topic is the effectiveness of different team collaboration services. And then just to like give more details in that first sentence, I also include the names of those services that I'm going to be investigating, in this case, Slack, Discord, and Microsoft Teams. So that sentence lays out everything that the rest of the report is going to be about. Now let's look at a third example here. This report investigates the causes behind the personal computer video card shortage of 2021, like I talked about in last week's lecture. So here um, is another investigation, but instead of looking at the effectiveness of different like um, software or services, I'm investigating causes for the personal computer video card shortage of 2021. Now, as a part of the rest of my report, I can talk about how there's been shortages before as a part of my historical background for the problem. Like this isn't something new, I mean, it's severity right now is something new, but there have been other times in which there have been shortages for one reason or another. And so I can talk about those, but as a part of my first sentence in my introduction at the very beginning of my report, I don't have to go into all that detail, okay? This is just to let the person reading my report know what it is, what is the topic of my report and what kind of report it is. Okay. Now, after that first sentence, the next sentence or sentences, so this is where we can have you know, anywhere from like just a couple of extra sentences to a few extra sentences, all right? These sentences can be where you elaborate on the report's topic, okay? That elaboration can give a little bit of historical context. It could be some useful details. Uh, it could be some kind of discussion relating to the topic, but basically you're fleshing out what it is you've introduced in the first sentence. So those extra sentences, like if we're talking about the M1 chip, could talk about, could be referring to how Apple is now transitioning their entire line of, of computing products to their own chip designs. 
so that basically you know iPhones and iPads and Macs will all be using the same type the same architecture of system on chip uh, which is you know kind of exciting for them um, but there's also like um, concerns that you could raise in these first few sentences about like the the risk that Apple's taking by doing this but also the fact that they're already showing some great success in terms of increasing market share of ARM architecture and the fact that they continue to make money hand over fist uh, despite uh, this big transition which is you know, costing consumers from for having to let go of their old products to get this new stuff um, or for example with the effectiveness of several different team collaboration services those those sentences that follow right behind there I might want to say something about you know, what the hell do I mean by a team collaboration service I need to define it uh, I might even quote a definition from one of my sources that I found in my research that would be okay put some quotes around that say according to uh, the editor of PC magazine comma and then give that quote and then give your citation um, that this is what a team collaboration service is uh, then you could say a little bit about you know who makes these different uh, competing products uh, who are they marketed towards but again only a few sentences you don't want to go into a lot of depth right definitely not wanting to go over 500 words uh, for this introduction I think keeping it closer to, to 250 is a tighter introduction uh, then with this third example this report investigates the causes behind the personal computer video card shortage again there's where we can get into some sentences explaining who are the major players the fact that uh, AMD and Nvidia are the major manufacturers of, of video cards for computers um, you could mention that Intel is entering this space again you know they tried before and failed and they're trying it again now um, uh, with their um, XE platform um, which you hasn't yet materialized in like something of the same level of performance as like what AMD uh, and uh, Nvidia have but this is likely to change uh, once they do release a product um, so you can go into some details about that and then talk about um, the some of the reality of these shortages and now that reality instead of you writing about it this would be a great place again to include some quotes right at the very beginning from your research and some of those quotes might need to come from like uh, newspapers and magazines uh, that you find through the library's website uh, or even going to some of the technology uh, blogs like Wired, Ars Technica um, because you know in addition to the required sources for the project that come from library sources 10 cited sources ex access through the library you can have additional sources that come from anywhere but that anywhere you need to always make sure that you remember to explain like you where this writing is coming from like if you mention Ars Technica you need to say like this long-running technology blog uh, if you talk about uh, wired.com and take a quote from there you need to say um, that wired is a long-running um, technology um, and digital culture magazine you need to qu qualify it for your reader because they may not know uh, what you're talking about they may not be familiar with some of these places you're getting quotes from and it's also an opportunity for you to establish why you would be using one of these sources because again you need to evaluate those sources that don't come from the library and vet them yourself um, because I mean there's so much out there that's like just really rando uh, copy theft where you know there's basically mills turning out stuff that they've taken from other sources uh, but you need to sort through and sift through all that to find stuff that's actually coming from a source you can point to and say oh this is a writer who's been researching this stuff for years versus like this is some rando guy I've never heard of before talking about you know the video card shortage um, because obviously these two people are not equal in terms of like their experience their access to knowledge in the way that they talk about these things 
Um, so if, when you're looking to sources that are not part of those library sources, you have to do that extra work and explain that in your writing. Now, after you've given you know, a, a few sentences of extra detail about your topic, then you want to give and conclude your introduction with what I call a roadmap sentence. The reason I call this sentence a roadmap is that this sentence is what's going to show your reader how the rest of your document is organized. And the way that I like to, to write these concluding roadmap sentences is by giving a list. And that list needs to be in order of the sections and topics that you discuss in the rest of your report. Um, so this sentence could be kind of long. You could even break it into two sentences if you have a whole lot of sections. I wrote three example sentences here based on these introductory sentences we just talked about. So let's take a look at these. You know, the first one was about Apple's M1 chip. So this concluding roadmap sentence I wrote is in the following comma space the report presents a historical background of Apple's computing architecture comma what this means is the next section the person reads is going to be the historical background okay that's probably going to be like my heading for that section then the second part after that comma will be Apple's design process that led to the M1. So this would be like a process section about how Apple designed it. And that would come after the historical background. Comma, comparisons between Apple's M1 and other popular microprocessors. Comma, so that means the third section in my report will be this comparison, the compare and contrast discussion between the M1 and other microprocessors like what Intel has on offer, um, what AMD has on offer, maybe other ARM processors or maybe even RISC-V. Uh, so I could discuss a lot of different um, competing products that, that are competing in that same market space as Apple's M1. Then comma and discussion of the M1's applications. So what that means is the applications will be the very last section of my report. You know, and this is excluding like uh, the glossary, uh, if I include a glossary of terms, and my references. Those will be there. I don't need to say that here in my roadmap. The roadmap is the writing part of my report. Okay. So now an example relating to the second uh, example of the team collaboration services. This report is organized around a discussion of typical features of team collaboration services and software, comma. So this first part of my report will be a discussion of typical features of these things. This is like what what do they what what do they do basically? Comma space comparisons of the features offered by three popular services, comma, namely Slack, Discord, and Microsoft Teams, comma. So that means the second part of my report is going to be comparison, comparing, compare and contrasting Slack, Discord, and Microsoft Teams. So I talk about what are the common features of these products. Then I have a section where I'm comparing and contrasting those three products I'm focusing on, comma, and discussion of the economic considerations of each service uh, considered. You know, I, you know, I see, I, can, I use consider twice there, each service discussed, right? I don't want to repeat considered in, in the same phrase. So that means the last section of my report will discuss the economic considerations, like how much does each cost? You know, what kind of features do I get if I pay X amount versus Y amount? That kind of thing. And then finally, for the example about the personal computer video card shortage, uh, I give this sentence as the roadmap. This report examines the current video card shortage by first, comma, presenting a history of personal computer graphics and video cards, semicolon. 
I use a semicolon here because I got all these commas for using the this um, these words to imply the order first, then finally. Um, so to be able to break apart and let the reader better understand this sentence, that's why I'm using semicolons here. Okay. Normally, I would I would say you don't use semicolons, but in this case, it helps make sense of this very long list for my reader. That's the reason why I do it. So the first part of my uh, report is going to be the history of computer graphics and video cards. So talking about like going all the way back to like, you know, Voodoo 3D accelerators and even before that I could talk about basic 2D raster video cards like um, CGA, EVGA, or no, EGA, then VGA, um, etc. After that semicolon, I say then, comma, so this will be the second part, discussing the sources of, mm, this looks like a typo, discussing the sources of, not Tim, of, oh, demand. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's just an X, the font has like a weird space there, so that's actually one word. Discussing the sources of demand and constraints of supply in the video card market, semicolon. So that means the second part of my report will talk about the supply and demand aspects that's causing the shortage. Semicolon, and finally, comma, concluding with suggestions about how to solve this dire problem. So that means the third section is going to talk about possible solutions to the problem of the shortage. So again, th these are three very different examples, both uh, or that are showing you like how to write that first sentence. We discuss some of that the extra explanation discussion in the middle part of the discuss of the introduction, and then you want to conclude with your roadmap sentence for uh, your introduction. So. In order to write a good introduction, you need to have already done research on your topic. You can't just write this without having really thought about and learned about the topic you've selected. So you've got to do that research first, um, at least the initial research, to have learned as much about the topic as possible. Because learning about the topic is what gives you ideas about how to organize the report you're going to write and also to choose the type of report that you're going to write whether it's looking at a design and reviewing it or looking at or doing an investigation of a topic and investigation meaning of there's a lot of different ideas wrapped up in that about you know what you're writing about and like what is going to be the ultimate purpose of it uh, whether it's just presenting your information whether it's trying to provide solutions to a problem etc so with that in mind this week's weekly writing assignment, just to keep you moving forward on uh, the research report, is to draft an introduction in memo format. And so for this week's weekly writing assignment, I basically want you to write an introductory paragraph for your research report following these guidelines, thinking about these examples we just discussed, but at the top, I do also, because it's a memo, make sure you have the to, from, date, subject. And the subject can just be research report introduction. Okay, to Professor Ellis from you, and then give uh, next week's due date, next Wednesday. Uh, and then underneath that, you will write a paragraph. Okay, now, um, it needs to be a paragraph, complete sentences, not bullet points like I was using here just for our discussion. You know, like I'm writing points on the chalkboard, so to speak. We don't have a chalkboard, we got my computer screen. Your introduction needs to be complete sentences and a single paragraph, okay? That paragraph needs to have your opening first sentence that establishes the purpose of the report and its topic. It needs to have a few sentences after that that gives some elaboration on the topic. And then you conclude that paragraph with your roadmap sentence. And the roadmap sentence should be pretty easy 
if you did last week's weekly writing assignment about what sections you want to include in your research report. Now, I don't want you to think, though, that with last week's weekly writing assignment, you may have included a whole bunch of different sections. Well, when you begin writing your research report, you may find you don't need to include all of them, partly because of the length of the assignment, but also whether they're actually needed or can some of those topics of the different sections be combined in some way. And so you get to decide that. Because like I said last week, there's no you're right or wrong in terms of the overall organization of your report, as long as it obviously follows some logical sense, right? Um, that you know background comes before discussion. You need to pro you know, provide a foundation before you build your house, right? But beyond that, which of those sections you get to choose based on how you want to discuss the topic uh, that you selected for your project, okay? All right, so that's the weekly writing assignment. Um, I'll get this posted on OpenLab along with this week's um, lecture. Uh, remember that uh, we have office hours Wednesday, 3 to 5 p.m., so stop by and talk with me, whether it be about the job application portfolio project or about the research report project. Uh, if you got questions about the class at all, and then also you can email me, jls at citytech.cuny.edu, uh, with any questions you have, and I'll get back to you. And also email me when you catch up and, and s submit an assignment late. Um, I want to see everybody, you know, make it through the semester. I know, like, some folks have been struggling and trying to keep up. Um, touch base with me if I haven't heard from some of you recently about your progress uh, with catching up. Um, if there's any way that I can help, if you're know, answering questions, you need to reach out to me. I don't want anybody suffering in silence, okay? Um, we can make it through this, um, but the work does need to get done, okay? And again, just to look over the syllabus, we still have to talk about the research presentation, which will be the last project in the class. Um, we'll save that for you know, a week coming up. But if we look at the schedule, like we're week 11 now, Wednesday, November 17th, and what we have coming up, the last day of class is going to be Wednesday, December 5th. But the last day that I can receive any work, I mean, there is no going beyond this date, okay, is Tuesday, December 21st. All work has to be submitted by then. Um, so that's where we're kind of going towards, is up to that hard deadline. But you know, anything you get in, obviously, before then, on time uh, or a little bit late, is preferable because that gives me more time to look at it and give you grades on everything. Um, but for those folks that need it, we do have a little elbow room uh, with um, the semester by getting things in by Tuesday, December 21st. Okay? So good luck with everything. You got my contact information. Let me know if I can help you in any way, either by stopping by office hours or emailing me. And um, you stay healthy, do everything you can to protect yourself and those around you, and we will get through this together. Good luck.